Okay, that seems to have worked. Thank you very much for the sponsors for the, that help us financing uh, the U EuroPython conference. Uh, without them, we would not be able to do this for you. Uh, so let's invite our next speaker. Uh, hello, Miki Tibika. Uh, where are you um, calling us from? Israel. Oh, Israel. Nice. Yes. Uh, so you're one hour ahead of us. <laughs> yes. Exactly. And we are already a bit cl uh, short on time, so I think um, uh, it would be good if you start your screen share. I think you're going to show us uh, something about IPython, so that actually works well with the pandas we saw before. Yeah. Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is Miki Tebeka uh, from 353 Solutions. Uh, I've been a Python developer around 25 years now, uh, which makes me old. Um, I'm writing code most of the most of these 25 years, and I'm teaching a lot in the last seven years or so. And during the COVID break, I also wrote a small book called Python Brain Teasers. If you're interested, it's on Gumroad or available on the programmatic bookshelf. And in this talk, I'm going to show you IPython, which is my uh, choice of tool for uh, playing around and starting the program. So. Um, the IPython is an interactive prompt, also known uh, as a REPL, which is a read, eval, prompt, and loop, which means it's going to read your input, uh, evaluate it, show you the output, and wait for another input. And this is a very effective way of working. Uh, you can test your code, you can test assumptions about your code while you're writing your code, uh, way before you start having code which is stable enough for testing. If you read a bit of uh, how Paul Graham is describing programming, he says that uh, we are at the beginning doing what is known as sketches. We're not sure exactly how it's going to form out, so we're playing around with bits of code. And for this um, type of playing around and trying out things, and also for uh, in data science, the exploratory uh, stage, uh, IPython or the Jupyter Notebooks, which most of the stuff I'm going to talk here is also relevant, is a great, great tool. Uh, Another thing that um, is great about IPython is that you don't need to do context switch for almost anything else. Everything you need is at your fingertips and what you're going to do is just write in IPython. You don't need to do a context switch to the browser or context switch to an editor and running tests. Everything is right there so you can stay focused and see what's going on. So we will, what we're going to do is I'm going to have a task uh, which is uh, I'm going to load compressed log files from a directory to a pandas data frame. And throughout this task, I'm going to mention some of the features that IPython is helping me. And note that some of the code that's written here is specific to IPython, meaning if you copy and paste it to a Python script and try to run Python on it, it's not going to work. This is not just pure Python. So the first thing we, go, we want to have a look is where am I? Uh, what's the current directory? So. I'm starting with the percent sign. The percent sign is what is known as a magic command in IPython and the PWD magic command is saying, what is the current directory? And I can see that the current directory um, is this, this directory that I'm, I'm here. Um, and there are a lot of magic commands. You can use the magic magic uh, to have a look at all the magic commands out there and you can even write your own magic. And we will cover some of them throughout this. Okay, so um, the logs directory is here in un, under this directory in the logs directory. And instead of uh, doing copy and paste, uh, I can use the output. So if you notice on the left side, there is an out and IPython is saving the output for you every time. So I can do logs dir equal out of four plus logs. And now I have the logs directory, which is there. And yes, IPython is going to consume memory because it's going to keep almost everything in memory, but it's really nice, especially if you run something that takes uh, five or six minutes and then, oh, I forgot to save it in a variable. It's right there. Now I want to have a look at what are the files that are found in this directory. Uh, I can use the Python one or I can use the command line, uh, in my case, ls, because I'm running on a Linux machine uh, to see what's there. And I can pass the logs directory as a variable to the ls command, and I can see what are the files that are found there. 
right? I can pass direct uh, parameters like this, or I can do in curly braces and both of these. Oh, sorry, LS. Uh, Okay, so maybe something has changed since the last time I checked it. Um, this used to work as well. But these are live demos for you, right? You got to live on the edge. So um, I want to see the files and I want to get them into a variable so I can play around with them. So I can do I can do file equal ls logs deal. Oh, I see, I had a typo. There was an extra S on the end. It should work without it. Okay, uh, and I'm going to use the long format for the LS. And now when I'm looking at files, I see that I got the list of files that is basically the output of the LS command. And note that this thing is not exactly a Python list. It looks like a list and you can access things from it, but it's not exactly a list. And if you do files dot and then hit the tab key, IPython is going to open all the possible completions for you as a menu and you can scroll down and see what's going on. And if you start with a prefix, it will show only the things that start with that prefix. So you can do that. For example, um, I want to get rid of I want to have a look only at the log files and not on the SHA signature or the total. So I can do glob of the word log. Sorry, grep on the word log. And now I can see only the log files. Okay, so I can do log files equal files dot grep of log and now I have only the log files in this list. Another thing that uh, this list object has, it's already split the output into fields. So if I'm doing a uh, logs files dot fields, and I'll take the fourth field, uh, I'm going to get the file sizes. So to see what is the total amount of data that I have, Um, so this is the amount of data that I have in this directory. Uh, if I want to see it in megabytes, for example, again, I can use the and two to the power 20 is one megabyte. So I have 4.8 megabytes in this directory. So I can do a lot of exploration on the file system, on data, etc., cetera, uh, to do that. Okay, so let's, let's pick a single log file. So a log file is logs dir plus this sign plus, plus logs files. Uh, and we'll take the last fields, which is the file name and we'll take the first one. Right, so now I have a, a log file that I can play with. Now uh, it's always a good idea uh, to have a look at the data before you start to parse it. Uh, this file is compressed with a format known as XZ. In Python, there is an LZMA library, which knows how to work with these files. But before we are going to do that, I just want to have a quick look at that. So I'm going to use another utility from the command line known as XZcat. So I can call XZcat on my log file. And let's take just five lines to have a look. Right, so I can see that these are the lines that are inside this file. Okay, so let's gather some lines. So I can say lines and let's get 50 lines. And now I have these lines that I can uh, look around and see how can I start passing them and to pass them into a data frame. So let's pick one line, let's say line number three. And here we have the line. So we see we have the host, we have uh, the timestamp, we have the path, we have 
uh, the HTTP status, and we have how many bytes were sent back. And we can, we're going to use the simple approach of just using split. So line.split, uh, sorry, line.split. Wow, I'm making tons of mistakes. Uh, better to do them now, right? So uh, these are these are the fields that I'm I'm going to have. Uh, what I I like to do usually is um, to see the fields with their uh, position. So now I can see that field zero is the host name, and field three and four are the timestamp. Field five has the the verb, the HTTP verb, uh, with an extra, uh, on the beginning, et cetera, et cetera. So now I can go and start writing my code. And you can write code in IPython. It has pretty good support for uh, working with multi-line code. But at this stage, I usually like to invoke an editor. And as I said, I'm old, so I'm going to use an editor, uh, which is older than me. Uh, which is known as Vim. So the magic command, what it's going to do, it's going to run an editor, which is defined either by environment variable or by configuration on a file. And once you finish uh, with the editor and you exit the editor, it's going to uh, inject all of this code into IPython. So I'm going to edit logs.py. Oh, I forgot to, I wanted to copy all of these lines, sorry. Okay, and now edit log dot, logs dot py. And now I can put the data that I have here just as a reminder while I'm working to see what's going on. And then I can do pass line of a line. So fields is line dot split. And now I can return a dictionary with all the lines. All right, so the origin is fields zero and the time is fields three plus a space. Uh, fields four and method is fields five and I'm going to trim uh, this leading and then the path which is fields uh, six and then we have the status code which is int of fields minus two And the last one, which is the size, which is int of fields minus one. Okay, so th this is uh, how I can pass the line. And now when I exit the editor, I have this function ready here and I can check it on the line and see that it looks fine, All right? So origin, the time, the method, et cetera, et cetera, all of them looks okay. So now um, I can go over the lines. So for line in lines, and I can do print parse line of line. So I'm checking my code right as I write it. Everything is fresh in my memory and, and I know exactly what I'm doing. If you notice this printing is a little bit different than how uh, the shell showed the previous parse line. Right, this one is nicer. And this is because IPython is using something known as pretty printing. So it shows you some of the built-in data structures such as dictionaries and lists in a nicer format for us. If you want to use it yourself, uh, you can use it also in your code with pprint and then just add a P here. And now the code is easier to parse and see what's going on. Okay, and you can use the errors to scroll through history 
in IPython. And now when, once I checked my code on a small amount of data and it looks fine, now I want to check it on a whole file. I want to have a look. Um, so I, as I said, uh, the name of the library is called LZMA. It's available in Python, I think three, six and up um, as a compression library. But I don't really sure how to work with it. Right, so in Python, we have the built-in uh, dir command that shows us what's available as an attribute inside the module. And this open command here looks promising, but I want to check the help. So I can use a question mark, which is a shortcut in IPython to get the built-in help about an object. And if you use two question marks, you will get the source code. And sometimes because the documentation is not as great, uh, viewing the source code is helpful. So when I'm looking at the help, I see that I get a file name and I get a mode, which is by default binary. But in my case, I know I want textual file. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so with lzma.open and we have our log file and we're going to say it's a textual for a line in FP and I'm not going to print it out because there are lots of lines. I just want to see that there is no error. Um, pass line, offline. And we see that we have some kind of an exception. Uh, we'd like to understand what was wrong and how it failed. And this is another magic command in IPython that can help you during development. Uh, there is a magic command called PDB PDB, if you don't know, it's the Python debugger. It's a text-based debugger that most of the editors that you use, use it under the hood uh, to run debugging. And if you invoke PDB, what uh, IPython is going to do, once there is an uncaught exception, it's going to start the debugger exactly at that location. So uh, if you want, I won't get into PDB. Uh, there is a shortcut for help about all the commands that you can have. Uh, L is showing you what's going on. But basically I want to look at fields and I see that this field is um, an, an empty sign, a minus sign because we got four or four. So there are no bytes sent out. So now I know how to fix my code. I can do quit and then I can go back and edit my code. All right, so I'm going to change it a bit and do size equal zero if fields minus one is minus else int of fields minus one and I'm going to change it to size. Okay, and now I can run the code again and now it's fine. Once you're done with that, I recommend turning PDB off because it's gonna be really annoying on every mistake to get the debugger somewhere down the line. Okay, I can also um, check, for example, how much time it takes. So there is time and there is time it magic. So pass line of line. And I see that uh, passing one line, and that's a good way, by the way, if you called in the winter to heat up your CPU. Um, also a good way in doing live demos to waste some time. Uh, so we see that it's about 1.69 uh, microseconds per loop. If you want to check uh, a bigger piece of code, for example, this code, you can do it with two uh, percent marks. And this becomes now what is known as a cell magic, meaning it's going to run this magic on the whole code, on the whole cell, and not just on one line. So what I have in line 52 is called line magic and this is cell magic. This is now going to check how much it takes for the process of the whole file. It's about, it's 328 uh, milliseconds. Okay, so once I'm done with that, uh, I can do records equal uh, pass line for of line for line in lzma.open log file uh, and then import pandas as pd and the f equal pd dot data frame from records uh, records 
Okay, um, and now we can uh, have a look at our at our data frame. Oh well, I'm running uh, short of time. Okay, and it looks it looks fine. Uh, sometimes uh, when I'm showing the whole data frame, it looks too much. And the nice thing about pandas uh, with the combination of IPython and Jupyter Notebook, that pandas knows a lot about that. So I can do a pd dot this uh, options and dot display uh, max rows equal five. And then when I'm showing the data frame, I will get less of a context. With that, uh, there's, there are a lot of options in pandas and uh, in IPython to play around with these things. So, um, the, and there is a configuration file that you can uh, do a lot of other things with it. Um, you can save the history, you can do a lot of things. Uh, apart from all, everything that is built in, uh, you can, also use a lot of extensions uh, to uh, Python. So there's IPython SQL, for example, which is an extension for working with SQL. So I can do S, uh, SQL and I'm telling it to connect to the SQLite database of the weather.db. Uh, sorry, load ext SQL. And now I need to do, I can do Oh, it's my day of typos. I'm really sorry about that. So SQLite, the weather DB, and now we can do SQL uh, select from weather where the temperature is bigger than zero. And this is going to give me a list of lines. I can do also config SQL magic dot auto pandas equal true. And then if I'm running this again, I'm going to get it in a data frame, which I can join with my data frame for what I'm doing. Yeah, as I said, there are a lot of configuration options in IPython and you can use them. Um, if you're working with another editor, uh, not like me with in Vim, but with PyCharm or something else, uh, you don't have to drop the IPython support. In PyCharm itself, there is a configuration option. In the console, use IPython if available. And then once you do that, you will see that the console is now with IPython. And what you can do when you're running code, uh, instead of doing run, uh, you can select a piece of code and do right click and execute selection in the IPython console. And this is going to work very much like it worked with the um, edit magic. This is going to run it. And now you have pass line here, which uh, you can try it out and do many things. So even if you're not uh, old like me and using Vim, but you want to use um, PyCharm or uh, other editors, you can use them still successfully with IPython. Um, so, um, and, and of course you can have your own, there is an extensive configuration file. You can add uh, your own magic commands. This one is very useful for me. Um, and that's about it. Uh, Thank okay. you very much for listening in, and I hope uh, you'll consider um, using IPython in your development process. I think it will speed it up and make you much more of efficient developer. So thank thank you very much. Um, I'll stop video. Um, we have one question for you. Okay. Um, can you also use PUDB as a magic command? Um, probably yes. Uh, I don't know. Maybe there is a ma built-in magic already someone wrote for it, or if you install PUDB, there is a already installed an extension. Uh, I haven't checked it. PUDB is a, is a debugger, which is more visual than PDB. So it shows you um, 
a nicer environment, but it's still textual based, so you can use it over SSH sessions and other commands. Uh, I haven't checked it. Maybe there is a configuration for it. Okay, thank oh. you. Uh, there's also uh, questions coming in last minute uh, okay. and get, uh, getting extra votes for this as well. When you finish <laughs> the coding, how do you save everything into one file? So, or script? So, so there is a magic called history, which you can uh, save uh, things. I, I won't go into whatever it does. The, um, I'm using, uh, showing the Python prompt, showing the output and um, showing where to save and then um, edit dash x says don't run the file uh, I have all of these here and what I usually do I save it as a python file and then I start uh, transforming this python file into a, a module or something which uh, I want to work with so you could pipe that into vim from there as well yeah yeah but I, I'm just saying I'm, I'm saving the history.log and then I'm opening this this log uh, probably his.py was a better name for that and from there i'm starting anything it's the same problem uh, when you work with jupyter notebooks and you have your notebook and now you want to convert it to a module that other people can use um, it has an option to export it to a python file and then you start restructuring this python file for a more specific python code uh, and as i said at the beginning this is for the explorative phase when you're trying out things we're not sure how the code is going to look once you have a good notion of how the, how the code is going to look usually switch uh, to an, uh, my ID, which is Vim, but any other ID, writing tests and, and writing Python code is at large. Okay, thank you very much. We don't have time for more questions in here. Uh, I see more coming in and there's also some discussion in the Discord channel. So if you have further questions, please ask them there. I yeah, have to thank on. you for your talk. It was very interesting.